This video was brought to you by LogRocket, the front-end performance monitor that records videos of user sessions along with logs and network data, surfacing problems and revealing the root cause of every bug. Try it today at LogRocket.com YT. Hello developers, in today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how lazy loading works in React. We're also going to learn how to apply code splitting in lazy loading using React, lazy and React suspense. And we're also going to build a demo React app to see these concepts in action. Oh, there's a lot going on today in today's video. So I hope you're ready to have some fun and do some coding. But before we get into the really fun stuff, let's talk about lazy loading. Like what the heck is lazy loading? So basically it's a design pattern for optimizing web and mobile apps. The concept of lazy loading is pretty simple. You initialize objects that are critical to the user interface first and quietly render non-critical items later. So when you visit a website or use an app, there's a good chance you're not seeing all the available content. Depending on how you navigate and use that app, you may never encounter the need for certain components and loading these unneeded items costs time and computing resources. So this is where the magic of lazy loading comes in because it lets you render elements on demand, making your app more efficient and improving the user experience. And those two things are always good in web development. Now, as I mentioned earlier, just very briefly, React has two features that make it very easy to apply code splitting and lazy loading to React components. Those are React Lazy and React Suspense. By the way, I'm in CodePen right now, but eventually I'm gonna be showing you the application in codesandbox.io because it is more robust and is able to support uh, what we're going to be demoing today. So let's get back to React Lazy and React Suspense. React Lazy is basically a function that lets you render a dynamic import as a regular component. And these dynamic imports are a way of code splitting, which is central to lazy loading. React Lazy also eliminates the need to use a third party library like React Loadable. Woo! And then React Suspense. Now this lets you specify the loading indicator if the components in the tree below it are not yet ready to render. I also mentioned code splitting earlier. Let's talk about code splitting really quickly because with the advent of ES modules, transpilers like Babel, bundlers like Webpack, Browserify, we can now write JavaScript apps in a completely modular pattern for easy maintainability. Now, usually each module is imported and merged into a single file called a bundle. And then that bundle is included on a web page to load the entire app. As the app grows, the bundle size increases and eventually impacts page load times. Now this is where code splitting comes in because code splitting is the process of dividing a large bundle of code into multiple bundles that can be loaded dynamically. And this is gonna help you avoid performance issues associated with oversized bundles without actually reducing the amount of code in your app. One other important thing to talk about quickly, dynamic imports. One way to split code is to use dynamic imports and that leverages the import syntax. Calling import to load a module relies on JavaScript promises. So it returns a promise that is fulfilled with the loaded module or rejected if the module can't be loaded. For example, this is what it looks like to dynamically import a module for an app bundled with Webpack. And now when Webpack sees the syntax, it knows to dynamically create a separate bundle for the moment library that I specified up here in the import area. Now, let me code out a little quick component here without using React Lazy. So you can see the comparison when we start coding with React Lazy, you can see the differences. Now, React Lazy makes it super easy to create components that are loaded using dynamic import, but rendered like regular components. And this automatically causes the bundle with the component to load when the component is rendered. And React Lazy also takes as its argument a function that must return a promise by calling import to load the component. And then the return promise resolves to a module with a default export containing the React component. And as you can see now, there are some differences. I mean, not huge differences, but they are important when we're talking about React Lazy. 
pretty straightforward in this little example. And now this is where we segue into React Suspense because a component created using React Lazy is only loaded when it needs to be rendered. So we need some kind of placeholder. You know, I'm thinking like some, some animated dots or some kind of progress bar. We need to show that to the user while the Lazy component is being loaded. We need that loading indicator and that is exactly what React Suspense is designed for. So React Suspense is a component for wrapping lazy components and you can wrap multiple lazy components at different hierarchy levels with a single suspense component. And the suspense component takes a fallback prop that accepts the React elements you want rendered as placeholder content while all the lazy components get loaded. So you can see here in this brief demonstration where I'm going with that. And you can actually place an error boundary anywhere above the lazy component to enhance the user experience if that component fails to load. So let's pop on to code sandbox here so you can see exactly what this looks like using a calendar application. Now I'm not gonna code out this whole thing because it would take forever. So I do have some, some pre-coded stuff here, but you can see what it looks like in an actual application. So let me, let me add a few things here. Now you may notice some of these imports here. We created a simple loader component, and now that's gonna be used as fallback content for the lazy calendar component. We also created an error boundary to display a message when the lazy calendar fails to load. I've wrapped the lazy calendar import with another promise to simulate a delay of five seconds. I also use a condition to either import the calendar component or return a promise that rejects. Now, earlier on in this video, I briefly mentioned how you don't need to use React Loadable with React Lazy and Suspense, but what if you're doing server-side code splitting in React? Well, unfortunately, React Lazy and Suspense aren't available for server-side rendering. So for that server-side code splitting, you're still gonna have to use, or you still should use React Loadable. Now, one approach to code splitting React components is called route-based code splitting. And with that, you're gonna be using dynamic imports to lazy load route components. And so that's where React Loadable comes in because it's providing a higher order component for loading React components with promises. And then it also leverages that dynamic import syntax. So for example, let's say I'm coding out a React component called my component. I'm gonna import other component from that file. And then we're going to just go like this. And that's what that component would look like. Now here, the other component isn't required until my component is rendered, but because we're importing other components statically, it's actually bundled together with my component. So we can use React Loadable here to defer loading other component until we render my component and that splits the code into separate bundles. So here is the other component, lazy loaded using React Loadable. This component is imported using the dynamic import syntax, as you can see, and assigned to the loader property in the options object. React Loadable also uses a loading property to specify a fallback component that is rendered while waiting for the actual component to load. With React Lazy and React Suspense, code splitting and lazy loading React components have never been simpler. They can be total lifesavers. These functions make it so much easier than it ever has been to speed up the performance of your React app and improve the overall user experience. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed the tutorial, you can see the full tutorial in our blog post linked in the description below. And if you want to see more videos and tutorials like this, make sure to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment in the comment section below. You can also find more tutorials and videos we've already posted on our YouTube page.